Okay. Good morning, students. Today in the group, I had two posts. One was on what is an exon, and the second post was on related to Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, which is DMD, and the test which is used for that is MLPA. Now in this video, I'll be discussing the basic core concept behind this testing of MLPA, where it can be used. how it is read and future prospective MCQs based on this topic. So what is MLPA? First we will go to the expansion. It's multiplex, ligation, dependent, pro, amplification. That is MLPA. Each of this, each of this meaning I'll be discussing in the following slides and you need not memorize this thing. Once you are at the end of the video you will be easily able to use it fluently as fluently as you use your name and where it is used the question is where it is used it's used for any diseases with large deletion or duplication whenever there is a new thing the first question which generally arises is why why do I need this new thing why can't I use a previous existing thing to diagnose things the question is generally why not a PCR or why not a fish the problem with PCR is PCR detects very small deletions and duplications when it's small whereas fish is for a larger one. The disadvantage in fish is you can't see this deletions of this caliber in fish it's not visible to the naked eye. Whereas what happens in PCR is this picture is kind of very close to me this is from my PG dissertation I'll talk about it later but these are the bands produced in a PCR right and this band size is 330 base pairs okay but in DMD or Duchenne's muscular dystrophy the deletion is going to be in kilo bases kilo 10 power 3 base pairs so if it's going to be 10 kilo base deletion it's going to be 10,000 base pairs where this gel would not be sufficient enough to diagnose it. That's why we have invented a new thing called MLP, right? So we'll un first look at the core concept of MLPA. Before going to that, there are few steps in which MLP is done. The first step is DNA denaturation and hybridization with the MLPA probes. The second and the important step is ligation reaction. The third is a normal PCR reaction. Fourth and fifth are how it is read by electrophoresis and data analysis. We will first target on the first three steps. This is how we will have this as a crude genomic DNA. I extracted uh, DNA from blood, peripheral blood and this is a crude genomic DNA. The first step is DNA denaturation. I denature the DNA as per my wish. I break it like this and then is hybridization with MLPA probes. These are the MLPA probes. I add this denatured, denatured DNA with MLPA probes. So what will happen? These probes will go and bind to wherever it is suitable. It will go and bind like this. Right. This is the first step. The second step is ligation. What do I do is I ligate these through probes so it forms it forms a single unit now. Right? It forms a single unit. Now my pro is this. Now what do I do is there are PCR primers here. Along these there are PCR primers. Add these PCR primers to the probe and I just amplify it. This process is exactly, exactly the same what we do in a PCR. The same process, annealing, all those things, the same process as that of a PCR. It will amplify the probes. Then it's read. The last two steps which I showed in the last slide. It is read by either fragment analysis or capillary electrophoresis. This is, and the output is given by the computer which is uh, used for interpretation. We'll go through the steps again. The first step, the DNA extraction, which has been denatured, to which MLPA probes are added. 
when you add an MLPA probe to the denatured DNA, it will hybridize to its corresponding areas. It will hybridize. Then comes the step of ligation. I ligate the hybridized thing into forming a single unit. So this, uh, when it forms a single unit, then PCR amplification is done and it gives the products. You may not, you may not understand it this way. So next, I'm going to go with an example, right? Same DNA, but now the DNA I am having, we'll imagine that I am having a DNA of a Duchenne's muscular dystrophy patient. And here, I add the same MLPA probes. But here, I'm adding an extra info. These probes are targeted against the exons. Exons or the protein coding regions of the DMD gene, right? In DMD, there are totally 79 exons. So, when I'm gonna going to add this MLPA probe to the sample, I'll have the probes, the MLPA probes, MLPA probes will bind to exon 1, exon 2, exon 3, dot 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 till 79. Each individual different probes, fine. So next is going to hybridize. Right? That is the twist. When this hybridization happens, since this is a patient of DMD, I presume, okay, we'll presume this is exon 5. 5 is my lucky number, so. This exon 5 is deleted. So this portion of the genomic DNA is not there. So what will happen to this corresponding thing? It will not hybridize. Right? It will not hybridize. When it does not hybridize, when it does not hybridize, the pop, will it ligate here? No, because this will be washed away in the reaction. So, there is no ligation and there is no formation of single unit. There is no formation of single unit, right? This part is absent. So, my PCR primers cannot bind and there will be no amplification at all. So, there is going to be a nil product. Right? Fine. So, there is not going to be any peak produced. That's how I interpret a exon deletion in case of a disease. I'll give you one more minute. Just go through this again. I'll read with along with you. You also remember, revise it. This is a case of a DMD where I denature and add MLPA probes. This MLPA probes will have 79 exons, 79 different probes. And when it hybridizes, in my case, there's a fifth exon deletion. I presume there's a fifth exon deletion. So this part is not there. So the exon 5 probes will not hybridize. When it will not hybridize, it will not ligate. When it's not ligating, there will be no PCR amplification and there will be no product. Now, what is this peak? What am I talking about? What is this peak? This is the peak is the result of these two processes. When this product is sent by uh, to the soft, this entire product is given to the computer to analyze by fragment analysis or capillary retroforces which produces the peak. This is how a result of MLPA is displayed to me. When I see a MLPA result, it will be like this. And these things are the peaks. And wherever this arrow mark is there, there is no peaks. What does it mean? Excellent. These are the deleted areas. These are the exons which are deleted. See, there are many exons which are deleted. This is how a result of MLPA is interpreted. Right? So we'll go to few questions. MLPA probes are targeted towards each and every exon. That's first question. What is the basic principle of MLPA? It's hybridization and amplification technique. In other words, PCR based amplification. It's hybridization, amplification, PCR based technique. The steps 
you can you should know the steps it can be asked as an mcq as what are the fol following are the steps of mlp except first is denaturation and hybridize with mlp probes then ligate it then pcr amplify it and send it to electrophoresis by fragment analysis and then interpret it how are the end products read two types one is fragment analysis or capillary electrophoresis fifth one it's used for large deletions and duplications yes so how is this done this will be done i'll finish the next point and we'll sum up both can mlpa be used to say it's a homozygous or a heterozygous deletion these both are almost similar identifying duplication and identifying homo or heterozygous it's just quantification right so initially okay initially i have a crude dna okay i have something of an exon 5 this is amplified the amplified pcr product depends on the initial load because i know how many cycles i am running initially if it is one one unit and if 40 cycles are run it's going to be particular unit we we'll say 40 it's not exactly 40 40 units so if initially there are two units instead of one it's going to be 80 right in simple terms so what will happen in duplication is normally for everything we have two alleles right so this is one copy this is one copy so this having one genomic dna which will be having 40 uh, end product which will have a peak like this if it's a deletion it's going to be zero so zero and no peak if it's going to be a duplication this is going to be twice so this is going to be 80 so the peak is just going to be double the size how to say it's a homozygous or heterozygous deletion i know what will be the peak produced in exon 5 if it's going to be homozygous means both are deleted it's going to be like this if it's going to be heterozygous it's going to be 0.5 only one is deleted and other one is still present so it will result in 20 so it will produce a smaller peak so by the size of the peak yes i can say it's whether it's homozygous i can say whether it's heterozygous and i can say whether it's duplicated right these are the questions which can be asked in mlpa now what you are going to do is see this video again if you don't understand in uh, any of the steps take your robins there's a paragraph in robins given read the paragraph after seeing this video you will understand the beauty of the essence of each and every word in which robins it's given i always believe that a teacher is one who should ignite students not just give information should also allow the students to think about it answer this question in the comment section the most sought one the most advanced one is next generation sequencing or whole exome sequencing can this diagnose ml uh, large deletions in duplications which are addressed by mlpa or in other words is mlpa becoming redundant see you in comments and have a happy night that's for, that's for today from ranjit good night sweet dreams